Hello, my name is Jörg and welcome to Coach Red. In the last video, we listed our to-dos in our app. In this video, we will create a new to-do from within the app. We will have two pages in our app. So I start by giving list page a more meaningful name. To get to the new page, I add a plus icon on the header line. So I drag a container right below the header drag the header into the container and add an icon to the container. Beautification is next. First I change the icon to a plus sign. Next I go into the style tab of the container, change the layout to a horizontal one, spread the elements and align them in the middle. Save it and it looks great on the app. Time to create our edit page. Click on the little triangle in the top bar to get to our page overview. Say add new page, name it, and we can start. The headline is first. We want to create a new to-do here. I don't need the paragraph, but rather an input field. The label gets changed to new item, and for the value I need to create a new page variable first. So I head over to the variables section. I select page variable and add a new variable called task. It's a text. I head back to the view section and bind the new variable with the input field. Preparing for the page logic is next. I want to have a cancel and a create button. To do so, I drag a container with two buttons inside of it onto the page. Next, I go into the style tab of the container, change the layout to horizontal, spread the items and align them in the middle. The buttons get a little bit more space by adding a top and a bottom margin. The left one is my cancel button. The button could be a bit wider, so I go into style and change the width to 120 pixels. Same for my create button. Back to properties and change the label to create. Looking good. Next we configure the logic starting with the cancel button. When cancel is tapped, we simply want to navigate back. So I drag in the navigate back element and connect it to the component tab. All right, over to the create button. The create button should do three things. One, reject an empty task. Two, create a new to-do in our database. And three, navigate back to the list screen. To check the task, I drag in an if condition element and set the condition as a formula. The isEmpty formula returns true if the value is empty and false otherwise. The value to check is our page variable task. I connect an alert with the text that please enter task to the top output of the if condition. The top output stands for true, the input field is empty. If the task is not empty, I want to create a new record in our database. To do so, I first need to install the HTTP request from our flow function market. I drag it in to see what we need for the request. We have a URL which is required. We can specify an HTTP method and under optional inputs, we can define a request body in the JSON format. That looks very much like what we need. So I head over to the Firebase documentation I'm looking for create document. I see that the HTTP method is a post and the resource URL is still the same. The relative path is the same like for the get method and the collection ID is also required. And since we are sending data, we see that the request body is also required. With that information, I can head over to the variable section in AppGyver. I define two app variables, uh, one for the resource URL and the other one for the relative path. The resource URL I can simply copy from the Firebase documentation. The relative path is the same like in the getCollection method, so I copy it from there. With the variables defined, we can configure the HTTP request in the logic section. First the URL. 
it's a formula concatenating the resource URL and the relative path. From the Firebase documentation, we know that the HTTP method is post. Next is the request body. We haven't had that before. It must be a JSON object. So let's head over to get collection in the data section, run a test and see the structure of the JSON. The name, create time and update time are provided by Firebase. So all we need is the fields section from the JSON. Let's copy that. I define the request body using a formula. I add two curly brackets for a JSON object and paste the structure into the formula. For those of you who are not familiar with JSON, there is a link to a primer below. Still, let's have a look what we got here. A JSON object always is in curly brackets and it consists of a key, in this case fields, and a value, in this case another JSON object. Going further, we see that the object fields has another key called done with another object. Inside this object, we see the key boolean value and the value false. The comma indicates that there's another key coming. In our case, task. Task has another JSON object. This JSON object consists of the key string value and the string create to do in app. Create to do in app is the task that we copied over from our test result. And by replacing the string with our input field, we can send this data over to Firebase. Our input field is bound to the page variable task. That's why we use it here. Save it and I head over to the logic section to complete it with the navigate back. Great, I'm done on this page. So I save it and head over to the list items page. Here I just connect the plus icon to opening our edit item page. And I'm done. So I save it and head over to our preview app. The plus icon brings us to our edit item page. The cancel button brings us back. Going back to the edit item page, I check what happens if I create an empty task. Perfect. And now for the grand finale. Can we create a new task? Yes, we can. No puns intended. So in the next video, we will update our to-dos. See you there.